make sure we get it when we are in the office we spend some time praising our Lord and praying for all our requests hallelujah amen, amen? amen. I'm gonna read some scriptures and then we're gonna pray the Bible says in the book of Matthew and Mark again I say to you if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask it will be done for them by my Father in heaven Amen. and wherever you ask in prayer you will receive if you have faith therefore I tell you wherever you ask in prayer believe that you have received it and it'll be, it will be yours Amen. whatever you ask in my name this I will do that the Father may be glorified in the Son hallelujah Amen. oh hallelujah glory to our God hallelujah Amen. the Bible says whatever you ask there is no limitation hallelujah the limitation is your faith glory to God some of us we have our prayer requests in here and we believe that God will hallelujah Amen. hallelujah feel free to bring more hallelujah we believe that God will answer because whatever we ask in the name of Jesus by faith we will receive it Lord you can stretch your hands hallelujah let the angels hear your voice too, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. We presenting to you all our requests, hallelujah. We believe your word that says whatever we ask. In your name, by faith, we will receive it, hallelujah. Earlier, Lord, you said, Go tell John the Baptist that the crippled will walk, that the blind will see, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. In this request, hallelujah, some are crippled, some are handicapped, some are blind, hallelujah. But we believe in your name, hallelujah. Right now, you will heal them, hallelujah. Stretch your hand to them, hallelujah. Touch them right now, hallelujah. Whatever they have, we believe you can touch them. You can heal them right now. Hallelujah. There is nothing that is complicated to you. Hallelujah. You created everything. Say a word to your son. Say a word to your daughter. Right now. Hallelujah. One word and we will be healed. Hallelujah. One word. Hallelujah. I pray for joy and for grace. While we are waiting for your answer hallelujah fill your people with joy and grace hallelujah and patience to understand that everything will be answered on your time your time and your time alone hallelujah we praise your holy name and we magnify you and we say thank you in jesus name in jesus name hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. Thank you. May I call Dr. Stephen? He shared with me a word this morning, and I wanted to share in 30 seconds if he can. Hallelujah. Go ahead, Doctor. Praise the Lord. As we were worshiping, I felt the Spirit of the Lord say, share with the church a word. Our Christ is incomparable. Amen? Amen. Our Christ is preeminent. Amen? Amen? He is the beginning. He is the last. He is the Alpha, the Omega. He is the firstborn from the dead. He is everything. He's all in all. Amen, amen. 
And so the word that I want to share is from the Song of Songs, chapter 2, verse 3. Song of Songs, chapter 2, verse 3. I read from the New Translation by J.N. Darby. As the apple tree among the trees of the forest, or the wood, so is my beloved among the sands. In his shadow have I raptured, and sit down, and his fruit is sweet to my taste. That is our Christ. He's incomparable. Mm -hmm. and, and so I say, as the apple tree, it cannot be compared to the forest, or the wood in the forest. He is always there. He provides shelter. He provides a shadow for us to rest and enjoy and be delighted and be joyful. That's what the word is saying. We sit in his shadow. We find rest. We find food. We find fruit. That is our Christ. Let's sit in his presence today and delight in him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Welcome to Cross Friends Fellowship Church. We apologize for all the renovations. We're trying to make our church beautiful. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Um, I would like to start my message. Uh, John chapter 20, verse 24 to 29, please. And then I will invite you on, everyone to stand so we read together. Hallelujah. Amen. So now, Thomas, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nails marked in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out of your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God, then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Just lift up your hands, close your eyes. Let's pull on the presence of the Lord this morning. Brothers and sisters, by lifting your hands, be in an attitude of expectancy. Be in an attitude, you are expecting something from Jesus. Yes. Something that is great. Something that is honorable. Hallelujah. Something that is glorious. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The word of God says, Blessed are those who are hungry and thirsty. Because they will be filled. They will be satisfied. Yes. Hallelujah. Let your hand be an expression of your thirst of the presence of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. We are stretching our hands to you, Lord, this morning because you are thirsty. We want you and we want you more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says again, Jesus saw the man's faith and he healed him. He saw and he healed. Hallelujah. This morning, brothers and sisters, let your faith be visible. Be visible. Do not hide it. Hallelujah. Oh, let it be displayed so God can see it and God can heal you. God can touch you. Your expectation will determine the blessings that God will give you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One more touch this morning. I pray one more touch. Touch my sister. Touch my brother this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody receive the blessing of God this morning. Hallelujah. 
Oh, hallelujah. Receive the touch of God this morning. Oh, hallelujah. It's cold outside, hallelujah. But the church is full. People came to see you. People came to touch you, hallelujah. Would you manifest yourself this morning? Would you, hallelujah. This morning, I know people will be touched. Some will be changed and transformed. Some will be healed, hallelujah. We are now going to go back the same way we came this morning, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. We open up this morning, Lord. Touch. Touch your children, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Because you are hungry and you are thirsty. Be filled by the presence of God, hallelujah. Be filled, hallelujah. Be filled, hallelujah. Oh, praise his name, hallelujah. Put your hands together. Praise his name. Praise his name. Praise his name. It's raining, hallelujah. It's raining, hallelujah. Praise his name. Glory to God, hallelujah. Glory to God. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know about you, but for me, I have an expectation. Right. And my expectation, I want God to meet, it, to meet me. Not today, but yesterday. I do not know about you. I don't know what you're expecting God for. Hallelujah. There is an urgency of expectation in my heart. And in my hope today, is at the end of this service, we all understand what I'm going to talk about. I have a revelation that our attitude is the very thing that delays our blessings. Our attitude. That's this morning I ask you to reach out to God, to forget the people who are around you. So God can see how much you want him. I know sometimes when you ask people to raise their hands, they do not feel it's necessary. God knows me anyways, and God knows what I want anyways, so it's fine. Sometimes you have to display what you're looking for. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. How many knows if you do not confess what is in your heart? It won't take root. You have to open your mouth and say it. When you say it, you believe it. Hallelujah. Amen. So our attitude is sometimes what stops God to move in our, in our life. The blockage comes most of the time from us. Hallelujah. We block the supernatural power of God. Brothers and sisters, the world we live in is governed by natural laws. We are used and we know that one plus one equal two. But for God, that's not true. From one fish and one bread, he was able to have 5,000 fish and 5,000 breads. So one plus one is your logic. It's not necessarily God's logic. God does not operate in what is natural. He can if he wants. But his domain is supernatural. Hallelujah. Everything we do is logical, explainable, understandable, predictable. If you give me a dollar and another person gives me a dollar, I'm now able to buy something that costs two dollars. Amen. Amen. But that is not what I'm going to preach today. But I have to draw that parallel so you see what is natural and where we get stuck and what is supernatural. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Today God commanded me to tell you that all those laws are coming from him. Even those you believe are natural. All the discoveries and everything, they are coming from him. 50 years ago, or even more, people used to use giant phones, cell phones, to be able to communicate. Hallelujah. But right now, I mean, even the phone can be invisible. And then you will still communicate very, very well. Hallelujah. Amen. All 
those rules, all those laws, natural, God controls them. And when God wants to heal you, when God is looking for a miracle for you, he will go ahead and overrule those laws. Yes. One plus one equal one. But because God wants to bless you, he will change the rule. And then one plus one may equal 5,000 or even more. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God overruled the laws when it comes to Falon. Amen. She was on mat leave. She did not think about work. She did not go through all the process of interview and uh, applications and, and, and uh, reference check. The, the work came to her Amen. outside of any competition. Hallelujah. hallelujah. A natural law was just being overruled. Hallelujah. Amen. What are you stuck with today and you need God to overrule it? Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. You really have to understand this. Brothers and sisters, I like to connect with people. May God this morning overrule what is keeping you in poverty. Amen. What is taking your joy away. Amen. May God overrule that law that is taking your peace away. Amen. You work, you have a family, you come home, but you cannot smile. Amen. Your joy has been taken away by I don't know what. Today, this morning, God will overrule that. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Some of us are almost 35, 40. No husband. Or a husband came and a husband left because of a law. It is overruled in the name of Jesus. Amen. Brothers and sisters, be awake. If you get it spiritually, you will, move, you will leave this place different than how we came. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Overruled. Some we have skin disease overruled in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes, I know there is a law. Oh, because you were born like this, because you were exposed to overruled in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I know a brother, uh, I gave you this example one day. Uh, back home, he told me, he was one of my, my, the people above me, and he told me, you know, I'm, I'm approaching 35, so I'm really afraid because in our family, when you reach 35, you die. Only uh, boys, not girls. And then I said to him, I know your oldest brother, two of them. If you're approaching 35, that means they have passed 35. Am I right? He said, yes. So explain that to me. He said, okay, actually not all of them. Some of them. Okay, let it be so then. Because you believe something that may have happened f for two or three of, 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 your, of, your, of your brothers, that, that necessarily does not mean it will happen to you as well. Brothers and sisters, he did not know Jesus. He did not care much about Jesus. So we could not go in the supernatural um, environment and overrule that law that killed some of his brothers. And when he reached 35, he was dead. He was my friend, very strong. And I saw him dying quickly. Because in his mind, he knew at 35 he has to go. Hmm? Oh, I was born with a disease. When I was born, uh, there was a lack of oxygen. That's, the re that's a natural law. It can be overruled by a supernatural law. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, you know, I'm overweight. My metabolism. My meta, my meta what? <laughs> overruled. <laughs> overruled in the name of Jesus. Amen. Your metabolism is coming from where? <laughs> overruled. Oh, I'm too skinny because of my overruled in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This morning, I did, I did not sleep much. And then I said, okay, let's, let me listen to some music. I put some music. I put Lauren Dego. I, I like her very much. So I started listening to the music. Amen. Amen. It blessed my heart. Hallelujah. She said in one of her songs, you said I'm rich. 
But when I look at myself, I'm poor. You said I'm strong, but when, when I look at myself, I'm weak. Brothers and sisters, never said I am weak, but in the name of Jesus, I'm strong. Jesus said you're strong. But right now I am weak. But he said I am strong. So my condition right now is overruled. Yeah. Hallelujah. Overruled. So I listened to, to, to her song. The song touched me so much. I, I woke up. I started doing some research. And then this is what I found about her. I will be brief. Lauren Dego was like all these young uh, kids you see in, in the church. She was a member of the church in her local church. Her singing talents were known, were not unknown. Which means, in the church, among all the kids, they knew she could sing. Amen? So they encouraged her to go do some singing competitions. And then she went to the American Idol. She went twice, in 2010 and 2012. She crashed out of the competition before even she made it within the 24 finals. Because they did not think she was good enough. Amen? Yeah. She carried something some people around her knew what she, she was carrying. But when she went where people have natural laws, amen? Yes. She got disqualified because they said, you are not good enough. But they, they forgot who makes people good enough. Yes. Amen. amen? They forgot that. So the judges judged her not good enough. She was not even selected among the last people that you see on, sta on the stage. Okay? She got eliminated backstage. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Many of us, it happens. You know you have talent, but you don't even get to see the boss and do the interview. You get screened out from the beginning. You have zero chance. Hallelujah. And then whatever I was reading says, it happened that when she was invited as a member of a workshop. It did not happen. Okay? They think in the natural laws, it just happened. She was a member of a workshop somewhere, and the guest singer okay, for the workshop fell ill, which she subsequently replaced. Okay. This is the reason that most people miss everything. Because if he follows natural laws, you will say, okay, you got your chance because the person who was supposed to sing was ill. Amen? Amen. That's what you think. Last, last Sunday, I preached on uh, this Syrian general, okay, who, who had leprosy. Mm-hmm. And then a person may say, it happened that there was this little girl who knew somebody. You know how it happened. That's a natural law you can explain. They went there. They took this person. But God is in control. God is the one who controls everything. So it did not just happen. God was in control. Amen. Hallelujah. She fell the first time, God was in control. She fell the second time, God was in control. And it happened that someone was sick, God was still in control. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. She was warming up by going to the 2010 and then 2012. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When it does not work, when this first husband does not work, let them go. You are just warming up. Amen. Hallelujah. You are warming up. Amen. 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 Now, um, Lauren discography so far has earned critical and commercial acclaim. Amen. She has been nominated for 25 awards across f four major awards. I'm, I'm not going to name them. And she has won 11 so far. Amen. Amen. 
She is amazing. She is great. And I'm pretty sure you agree with that. Yes. Why? Because the supernatural superseded all the other laws. Hallelujah. The same is happening for you as well. Yes. You just have to understand that and connect to it. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You fa- How many times did you fail in the past? One, two, three. You were warming up. Amen. The real thing is coming. Amen. The real husband is coming. Amen. The real job is hum- coming. Amen. You just heard the testimony. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. How can this be? Because of one name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. That's the name you can tap into to, to claim the supernatural. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When you accept Jesus as a Lord and your Savior, you have access to the supernatural realm. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now my question is simple. Where is the problem? We know that. Why are we powerless? Why we cannot tap into the supernatural, even though we, we hear about it? What's going, what's going wrong? I'm going to tell you why. Because we are used, too much used to what is natural. Yes, that's right. We're too much used to that. The Bible said you will step on serpents and nothing will happen to you. But the natural will say, stay away from serpents. That's right. And then because of that, you are not courageous. Eh? You cannot dare to do something because you're looking at natural laws. Amen? Amen. We doubt too much. We learn too much about the, the natural. <clears throat> we spend less time learning why it's supernatural. How many times do you come to church so I'm coming to learn? Yeah. And just count it. The time you spend on YouTube and Facebook and compare to the time you listen to a Christian music, you come on Wednesday, listen to Minister Maki, and so on and so on. That's the reason we become powerless. Powerless. We understand the supernatural. We learn, no, I mean the natural. We learn it at school. Hallelujah. And because of this lack of knowledge, we doubt the supernatural. We deny it. And we block our blessings because they happen supernaturally. Hallelujah. We may come here and and sing Waymaker, uh, uh, Miracle Worker, uh, Promise Promise Keeper. Oh, no one is like Jehovah. We jump. But when God speaks to us, we use our natural eyes to look at what God is telling us and we deny everything. Let me give you a story. God told Abraham, you will be a father of many nations. Okay? Abraham looked at Sarah so, no way. <laughs> Me, maybe. Her, no. Sarah did the same too. She looked at herself and she said, you know what? I have passed the, the time to bear kids, like twice. So there is no way. Impossible. At that time, the servant, Hagar, passed by. And Sarah looked at Abraham. And Abraham said, hmm. Yeah. yeah, maybe. Because Sarah was okay with that. And then he started developing natural thoughts. He said, okay, if I'm going to be a father of many nations, I, I think it's going to work. Hmm? Yeah. Hagar, have you seen Hagar? Yeah, it's going to work. <laughs> we know the result. Ishmael. You know, all the people who study the Bibles are saying that Isaac and Ishmael are 
the, the, the ancestors of Arab with the Palestinian or all these people and the Jewish people like we know them they are all coming from the same person some people study their DNA it is almost identical so they are coming from the same grandparent who was Abraham because he wanted to follow some rules that were human rules he did not listen to what God was telling him God said, I will make you a father of many nations. He, he, he is the one who is going to make you. You are not making yourself. Look at the trouble now we have. Uh, since that time, they have been fighting. The kids fight, fight it. The grandkids fight it. And then it continues until today. Until today. Today, they are still fighting. Because of this mistake of trying to help God. And because God loved Abraham when he was 100 years old and Sarah was 99 years old, God said, okay, it's now. <laughs> Confusion. It was crazy. Impossible to explain even until today. There is no logical, no natural law that can explain that a woman who is 99 years old can, can bear a child. Right. It does not exist. Yeah. You have passed that time multiple times. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. It's because of the supernatural. Yes. I'm now telling this story just to make people laugh. Something you were told is not possible. Amen. Tap into the supernatural. It will be possible. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Leave that Domain the possibility domain to man and then connect to what is impossible to man. That's God's domain. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Welcome to the supernatural. Yeah. I'm very serious. Yeah. You are here, you are probably you are in the same situation, certainly. And then you spend all your time convincing yourself there is no way I can get married. There is no way I can get healed. It is impossible. Have you read the stats? Eh? They are predictable. They can explain them. Everyone can understand them. It is not possible. Brothers and sisters, I have another example. The book of John, chapter 11, verse 38, says, Lazarus was dead for four days. And Jesus I don't want to go into the story. So they brought Jesus. For Jesus, Lazarus was not dead. And even if he was dead, where is the problem? So they pressed Jesus to come. And Jesus spent some more time over there. So he came late. Very late. He was buried already. Jesus came and said, overruled. Amen. Yeah. And he told men, roll the stone. Brothers and sisters, Jesus did not need anybody to roll the stone. Lazarus could appear right there. Jesus did not want that. Sometimes for some miracles to happen, it has to go through people. God told me today to pray for people, right? And use the anointing oil. That's it. You understand? And then when I read this, I said, okay, I understand now. God can heal you from your chair. But some miracles must go through people. Yes. So you have to understand that. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God said, roll the stone for the guy to come out. Hallelujah. Amen. He was already dead four days. He was thinking all around. Hallelujah. But God said, overruled. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Come out. Come alive. Amen. Amen. So my title today... I'm trying to go back to, to, to my teaching, is Thomas' attitude. That's what we read uh, this morning. Thomas' attitude. And we read the book of John, chapter 20, verse 24 to 29. So Thomas said, unless I see. He did not stop there. So unless I see, unless I put my finger in, in the nail's wound, 
And unless I put my, 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 my arm in the side, I will not believe. Brothers and sisters, Thomas and all the other disciples were used to see miracles happening on a daily basis. They have seen all. And they watch. And Thomas watch. Crippled walked. Blind recovered their sight under his watch. Even people who were dead were resurrected. Amen? Amen. When Jesus, this miracle with Lazarus happened just one week before Jesus was crucified. So it was fresh in Thomas' uh, mind. Hallelujah. Yeah. But yet, he said, unless I see him and unless I touch his wounds, I'm not going to believe. Brothers and sisters, you have to learn how to believe even if you did not see. That's, right. That's where faith resides. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I understand that some people can doubt because they never heard. They told them a story. Someone told a story and then a story and story. When it gets to you, it's completely different. You can say, I'm in my living room drinking some tea. And then the same word pass around. The last person will be, it's so cold in Canada that you need to drink tea all the time. <laughs> you understand? So I can understand that those people may be confused, may be in doubt, but not Thomas. He saw everything firsthand. Hallelujah. Amen. Not him, not him. So he said, unless I see and unless I touch, do we do the same thing? Hmm? Do you think this, the same way? Are you also in doubt? Some even doubt that Jesus is God. You have to go read John chapter 1 verse 1. And then try to convince them again. Are you in doubt that the promises that God gave you will come to pass one day? Amen? Amen. Are you in doubt? Are you in doubt that the promises God gave us for this congregation, we will see them with our own eyes? Yes, sir. Amen? Amen? I remember some 10 years ago, Apostle, God spoke to Apostle and said, Plans will take off from this church, which was the beginning of the apostolic ministry. People will, will open churches from this very church here. Amen. Because of fear of God and faith, he embraced the message. We embraced the message as well. From that day, for the following 10 years, we opened two churches every single day. I mean, every single year. Two. Amen. Amen. That was like 10 years back. So don't be in doubt of what God is going to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When you doubt, nothing will happen. We heard the testimony of a son of this house. He wanted to have crus crusades. That was in his mind. But he was working for TELUS. And then he retired. And then he said, okay, now I have time. We saw the pictures of evangelists when he was in Rwanda. With thousands and thousands of people. It was a crusade like we see them on TV. Hallelujah. Amen. Let the supernatural act for you. Bring to life all your dreams that you think they were already dead. Amen. Connect supernaturally with God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Naturally, it is impossible. Some other people who retired, you know, it's cold, it's this, it's that. But God is using him. Amen. Apostle went to India. When he got there, everywhere, people were waiting for evangelist glory. So he was wondering, what did I come to do here? Because they're not waiting for me, they're waiting for someone else. Yes. Brothers and sisters, you have dreams? Yes. You have dreams? Yes. Do not bury them. Yes. Not yet. Yes. 
Hallelujah. The Bible says, blessed are those who believe before they see. Yeah. What do you believe God for? Seriously, what do you, what are you praying for? Blessed are those who believe, even though they did not see it. Disciples saw Jesus, they walked with them. They saw him walking on water. Even Thomas. Hallelujah. He saw Jesus walking on water. He saw Jesus feeding more than 5,000 uh, people from what? A little boy's lunch. So they saw all of that. But yet, Thomas was in doubt. He could not believe what Jesus was going to do. He could not believe that Jesus, who had said, I will die and come back. He could not believe Jesus was there. We do the same. We do the same. God gives you a revelation, and then you started thinking, um, I need a diploma to be able to do this. You see, I'm very short. Huh? Hmm? You, you cancel the blessing. You run away from what God has said. You run away. Thomas was used to see miracles. But whatever he has seen was not enough. Brothers and sisters, what is natural, you cannot change it, it's okay. We are asking you to educate yourself so you understand that there is, the supernatural is above the natural. Amen. The supernatural is really above the natural. Amen. Uh -huh. You did not succeed here, it does not mean anything. You can go on your knees and pray and that changes, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus said in the book of Mark, chapter 8, verse 31, He then be began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. So Thomas heard that too. Because Jesus told them, they will kill me, and then after three days, I will come back again. But yet he, yet he denied. The problem we have, we need visible, tangible things, evidence that Jesus is alive, that a miracle can happen. We have the same attitude as Thomas. Even though we sing, miracle worker, some of us, are always in doubt. Some of us are professional deniers. <laughs> they deny anything. Unless they see, and unless they put their finger in the thing, they do not believe. I will believe when they give me the position. Hallelujah! That is not what I'm talking about today. The church of Jesus moves ahead very slowly like a turtle just because of Thomas' attitude that we have developed and we have kept in so many things we do. Hallelujah. Amen. People say, do you really believe that God did say that? Yes. You know, you doubt yourself. I receive text messages, dreams, interpret this for me, and I'm glad. Because you, you wouldn't ask for interpretation if you don't believe. Am I right? Yes. But don't you dream? What do you do with your dream? What do you do with what God has given you? Who do you go who, to consult just to, to make sure you, you're understanding something? Who do you call for that? And why you don't? Because you doubt. Amen? Amen. You doubt. Some people will say, no, sister, it's your lucky day. They name you manager and you did not even apply for the position. It's your lucky day. There is no lucky day. There is no, there is, there is nothing. There is none. So, so stop behaving like Thomas. When you leave this church, talk to yourself. Stop behaving like Thomas. It is not a chance or a coincidence that we have fallen here who did not compete, who was on mat leave, and they offer her the position. 
until she comes back. Other people are there. They will wait until she comes back to be their boss. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> the supernatural overruled the natural to make her do a multiple jump ahead promotion. The many promotions at once. Hallelujah. Amen. When God gives you a, pr a promise, just accept it. Yes. That's the first step. Don't doubt. Don't refuse. Like Thomas did. Hallelujah. Amen. Believe before you see. That's what I'm asking you to do today. If I don't touch, if I don't see, I don't touch, I don't believe. That has to disappear in our mind. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I remember again Apostle talking about the, the, the radio waves. He said we are surrounded by radio waves. They could be someone right now in China talking on his radio. If I'm here with the right receiver at the right frequency, I can listen very well to a person who is in Africa and who is singing in his bedroom. I can do that. But let me ask you a question. Do you see those waves? What do you see? Amen. Nothing. So do not believe only when you have seen something. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I gave you the, the example of Rachel who came to my house with an urgency. She wanted me to pray for, for her because she was pregnant about to give birth. But she had believed that she needed to come to my house so that I pray for her. And she called me when she was on her way to my house. So I could not say anything. Hallelujah. Amen. And she came with her husband, who is one of the ushers. They only had one problem. God has asked them to bless me. And then they did not have money. They had one small bill. <laughs> and I told them, just come, you know. But you have to understand, if God asks you to bless someone, it's a curse if you don't bless that person. It is a curse. Because your miracle is tied to something. So they came. And I prayed for, I did not pray for her. I prayed for the baby. Whatever she told me was okay. But God directed me to do something else. I prayed for the baby. You all heard the miracle that happened. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. It's because she was connected spiritually to the supernatural. Amen. She understood if we don't do this prayer, I am going to lose. the. She did not know what she was going to lose anyways. I'm the one who went to pray for the baby. And later on, we understood the meaning of all of that. Amen. Amen. The supernatural. Amen. Amen. That's what I'm talking about this morning. You don't see, it's not a problem. You do not hear, it's not a problem. But God spoke to you. Whatever God told you, it will come to happen. Amen. You must believe. It's called faith. If you use the appropriate receiver at the right frequency, you will be able to hear the voice of God. Amen. You will be able to tap into the supernatural. Right now I'm talking to you. The sound is coming from these uh, speakers. I am not connected to them. No, nothing. I just have a small mic. Amen? Amen. Do you see my voice going and then entering in there? No. But you believe that this speaker is amplifying my voice. Hallelujah. Amen. So believe as well that the supernatural exists. Amen. Certain things are real. They are. You just have to believe. Even, if you, if, even though you cannot touch them, you just have to believe. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I would like to go quickly to a close here. Because these waves exist, 
We can hear them anytime we want, even though we don't see them and even though we cannot touch them. But let me say this morning, the presence of God is real too. Amen. You cannot see it, you cannot touch it, but it is real. Amen. That's why I'm, I'm asking you to believe. If you believe all these waves, you can also believe about the presence of the Lord. Amen. You can believe about the anointing of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So in this place here, hallelujah, Amen. there is healing. Amen. In this place here, the presence of the Lord is here. Amen. Hallelujah. In this place here, I can sense uh, prosperity waves. Amen. I can sense them. I don't see them. I cannot touch them, but I sense them. I see grace. I, I feel grace waves in this place. Hallelujah. I see and I feel favor in this place. Hallelujah. But do you believe it? Hallelujah. The Bible says when two or three gather together, where I am, in the middle of them, hallelujah, we are more than two, we are even more than three, hallelujah. Am I right? God is in the middle of us. Hallelujah. He is in the middle of us. It's more of us tapping into what we praying for and believe it will happen. You need a receiver. You need to turn around. Amen? Amen? And tune to the appropriate frequency. Hallelujah. Amen. But what is the problem? The problem is while I'm talking here, I know spiritually some people are shopping at cross iron. <laughs> Hallelujah. They are shopping. All they see is those stores or what they're going to do as soon as they leave here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because of that, you are not connected to the Spirit of God. That's right. I just told her, you, God is here. Amen. Right here. Yeah. So stop shopping when you hear a church. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Stop being in doubt. Stop denying. Stop being distracted. When you're distracted, you cannot connect to something. That's right. And that's how you miss it. Yes. When you are disconnected, when you cannot tap into the promise of God, there is a delay. It happened to Abraham. It took him 25 years for the promise to happen. Hallelujah. But God has told him before. But because he was not connected, he got distracted. He followed natural laws. And we all know the result. The book of Acts chapter 20 verse 7 to 9 says... There were many lamps in the upstairs room where we were meeting. Seated in a window was a young man named Eurycus, who was sinking into a deep sleep as Paul talked on and on. When he was, <laughs> when he was sound asleep, he fell on the ground from the, the window on the third level and died. <laughs> Hallelujah. Paul was preaching, but for this man, Paul was talking on and on and on. Because he disconnected, he started shopping, he went to the football game, he, he, everything. He was even watching a movie. Hallelujah. What should not happen, happened. He fell asleep, and then boom, done. And then he was dead. Hallelujah. The same thing happens to us spiritually. You have a need. At the beginning of the service, you were connected. Hallelujah. Amen. And then around the middle of the service, cross iron. <laughs> and by the end of the service, you're dead. Your dream is dead. Your healing is dead. Hallelujah. Ericus, I'm not going to go into Ericus just to go to, to, uh, to the end, but they prayed for him. Hallelujah. But the same thing is happening. Hallelujah. So don't let yourself be distracted. Amen? Amen? Some of us would like the miracle to happen first before they believe. 
Give me my fiancé first, and I will attend church every single day. <laughs> Amen. I will be consistent. If you bless me, I will work for you. I will know that God truly exists. You do not believe because there is a sign. Amen? Amen. You do not look for tangible proof before you believe that truly God exists. If that's your situation, then you will never know because the miracle will never happen. If you are waiting for signs before you believe, forget about it. That is not how God works. It's the other way around. I believe and then I see a sign. Amen. The Bible says again, Amen. Blessed are those who have not seen but yet believed. And I'm telling you today, I don't know what you're praying for. The Bible says, blessed are those who did not see yet, but they believe. Amen. You just have to understand that the ways of God are not our ways. How God operates, it, it's just difficult. But there is absolutely nothing that God cannot do. The book of Mark says, Chapter 16, verse 17. Everyone who believes me will be able to do wonderful things. By using my name, they will force out demons. And they will speak new languages. Yes. Who is able to do that? Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. It's those who believe. That's you just have to believe. That's the key. Yeah. I believe. God instructed me to pray for people. Lay hands on them. We're going to open the floor for you to come when I ask you to come. And then we're going to pray for you. You just have to believe. I believe for your miracle already. Hallelujah. But you have to believe. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Amen. The Bible does not say that uh, signs, you will, you, will, you will see signs before you believe. The Bible says signs follow believers. Not believers follow signs. Hallelujah. Am I right? Yes. Uh -huh. Signs will follow those who believe. Because you believe, you will see manifestation. You will see signs. If you want signs, believe. If you want miracles, hallelujah. The book of Mark chapter 11 verse 24 says, Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask, me in prayer, believe that you have received it Amen. and it will be yours. Amen. Okay, uh, this seems to be simple for me. You just have to believe. Right. Amen? Amen? The book of James, chapter 5, verse 14 says, Is anyone among you sick? Then he must call for the elders of the church and they are to pray for him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. That, that's what the Bible says. So you just have to believe. Yeah. Amen? Amen? So do not limit yourself on what is um, um, natural as only. I'm opening for the supernatural. If you do that, you're going to miss the supernatural. The book of John, chapter 11, says, When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. And Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. <coughs> Hallelujah. So he was dead. He was wrapped up with strips all around. That means he could not move. But when Jesus came, he overruled that. Amen. And the Bible says the dead man was alive. So he was dead already. Amen? Amen? But from there to let him go, let him go. Who? Who him? The elders, the pastors. You understand? So you have a problem. Jesus will heal you. But it takes a person in the middle sometimes 
to remove the, the, the strips for you to go. Yes. Do you understand? Yes. Because when the guy came out, I can guarantee you he was jumping. He could not go anywhere. He took people to remove those things for last rest to go. That's what we're going to experience today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The floor is open. You can dim the light down. Feel free to come up. And I will ask all the pastors to come and pray for you. You have heard Jesus. But you're still resistant. You do not think that what you heard was true. You do not think that God can heal you instantly right now, right here. You don't think that. That fiancé you have been waiting for is probably one prayer away. Just one. Amen. Jesus is telling you, your fiancé, come forth. It's now. That child you have been waiting for years is probably just one prayer away. Hallelujah. That disease that is tormenting you or tormenting the family members. Hallelujah. Jesus today can say, come out. Right here in this place. This job you applied for and you cannot get it. It's probably one prayer away. This promotion could be just one prayer away. Do you believe today? Thank you, Lord. Do you believe today? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Be in atmosphere of prayer. We believe for healing today. Hallelujah. We believe for a touch that will change your life, change your family. Right here today, your relationship with your husband, your wife, can change right here today. Hallelujah. We believe and it will happen. Hallelujah. It's all about faith. Glory to God. Feel free. We have room. Hallelujah.